Okay, so welcome back to the uh, Zexel injection pump rebuild. Got it torn all apart. Got it pretty cleaned up. Now, I've had this, uh, these parts were what were gummed up. See the gumminess on there? From the JP8 that sat around. I've had it soaking in some gasoline. Look at that. Just brushes right off. See the difference? So, we'll clean all these up. <clears throat> That's the last step before reassemble. Reassembly. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Got the manual, just like I had before when I took it apart. It's always a good thing to have an illustrated diagram or the actual manual saying, hey, take this apart before you take this apart, before you take that apart. Um, you can take stuff apart and take videos so that you know how to put it back together again because I've done that quite a bit it works but it's nothing like having having the manual so uh, here instead of dipping my fingers in there I'll get everything out of this way go fishing I mean, you couldn't get that stuff off with a brass brush before I soaked it. Now it just wipes right off. I mean, I probably could have wiped it off with my fingers, but it's okay. Clean all these parts up. I still don't. I don't understand what's going on with this one. This one's different. Yeah, that one's got the little lid right there. And this one, it's down inside. And the book doesn't really, doesn't really show where that goes. Um, I hate to try to knock it down in there. It doesn't fit down in there anyway, so... Um, so I don't know. I don't know if these were supposed to be up and they got knocked down or what's going on, but um, find out whenever we get it together. This was the middle injector. So anyway, let me finish cleaning these up. And uh, we'll get back to it. So I'm a bit of a dunderhead. When I laid them all out, where that one was like that, I noticed that that wasn't as long as this one. See? And because that head was flush with the top. Well, the head was flush because... That's the injection piston. Durr. So, I need to get these loose. Now what I did was I just put it in the vise like this. So, piston, basically the cylinder, see where the angle is. That goes in there grabs fuel, compresses it, 
as it rides up and down. So, you know, learn my lesson. Anyway, it's sticky because it needs to be cleaned. It's a tight clearance fit anyway, but I need to get all that gunk out. I probably couldn't even gotten it apart until I'd soaked it in gasoline and some gasoline got down in there. So, that keeps them together. I have the other one soaking. And, uh, the other one's soaking. Now, injection pumps are high precision, quality, very tight tolerance pieces of equipment. You should never do this at home. You've been warned. So I just put the lip, I didn't even clamp it in the vise, put the lip on the edge of the vise, pull it right out. So clean the gunk out and uh, reassemble them. Yeah, almost you can push it back up in there. So we'll go from there. But I'd love to hear this thing run today, but it, it's raining. And, uh, but I should have the pump done today. So, we get back to it. Okay, so I got those two done. Got one more to do, but I wanted to show you how I was doing it. So I take the nylon brush and get all the stuff out of that groove there. Clean it up real good. Shoot, sorry. Earthquake. Anyway, all right. Clean it up real good. Nice and sparkly in there. Now, the other ones, this one was kind of, seeing it's kind of, uh, don't make jokes. It's really stiff because of the junk in there. So let me get some solvent. Just work it around in there. Yeah, definitely don't make jokes. Until it's nice and free. No sticking. Clean it with said solvent again. Check the fit one more time. Oh yeah. Well, it's still, still a wee bit sticky, but not like it was before. I mean, it wouldn't move at all. So we got that good to go. All right, so put this one together. Now, you see the cut, and then there's stuff in the injection pump that keeps that little square boss there so that I don't know if you can see it flashing in the hole that's where it picks the fuel up and pushes it to the top so, so they're all good to go I'll reassemble them yep. okay So I'm gonna lay all the pits out, and uh, that way we're everything's lined up for when we start to reassemble. And these are those little caps that went. They go down inside of there and seal. So, all right, let me lay everything out and we'll get back to it when we go to the assembly. So I got everything laid out in the order they go in. And I forgot because I hadn't, I, I'm getting back to this project after a couple of months. And I forgot all about the fact that this is a, 
they call it a gasket. It's just a little steel ring, Whoop. and it's gone forever. No, there it is. So when I took this pump apart, they go between the cap like that. When I took this pump apart, it only had two. It was missing one. So the book doesn't show that as being a design issue. I don't have anything like that handy that I know of. I mean, I could probably look around here for the next six years and maybe find something. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the two together on camera or at least the one on one together on camera and then uh, I'll probably have to run out to the store and uh, try to find me some of these so so we'll see how this goes make sure that's lined up Go in this hole. You gotta rotate the thing till it drops in. See? Now it's in there. Well, there's a groove. There you go. Alright, so that's in there. Now put the cap in. Goes that. Spring. Okay. Supposedly this gasket. Five gasket. It's not the O-ring. The O-ring's number seven. So it says gasket. So I'm gonna drop that in there. That's where it says it goes. Take a cap. Now I'm still holding that pin in. And the spring goes on that little, see that little nub there? See that nub? Nub nub. Put the spring on that. Keep everything, try to keep it straight, level. Just gonna hand snug it right now. Alright, that'll hold that should hold everything together. Well I said it does and, and the pin dropped out. So be very careful with those little peeny pins. Alright, so that's together. Now this is your fuel shutoff rack. And that fits in like that. Well, shoot. So now I gotta take it apart again. Well, let me see. I don't have to take it apart because I can. There's different writing on the injections, on the things. So, see where it says M30, maybe? M30. Focus! Focus. Anyway. It says M30 on the side that's supposed to go towards the hole, and it has the uh, Zexel uh, Z on the other side. So the M30 is supposed to go towards the hole. Well, which way does the hole sit in there? The hole sits in there in the back. So that's correct. That is correct. So that's correct. Okay. All right. So then this goes in like this. See that? Your spring goes on. You got to compress your spring to get your keeper on. Well.
All right, so that just kind of fits together then, like that. Hmm. I'll just wait to put that part together till it's in the till it's in the thing, till it's in the unit. Okay, so got this slot right the whole slot that goes towards the back towards the hole drop that in okay take a little pin put that in there rotate it till it drops in it's in there okay all right take that drop it on top oh I gotta take this with me to the store so I can't put it together anymore but I could probably go ahead and put this one into the injection body eh, I'll just wait I'll go get this from the store and then I will finish assembling the units put them back in the body and it should be ready to go so we'll be back in a minute Okay, so after going all over the place, I was able to get a copper washer. It's only barely bigger, only maybe a few thousandths. But this isn't a critical, this is just a sealing surface. So your O ring is what seals the fuel at the top. This just provides a clearance fit to hold your little plunger thing down. So, <clears throat> if it doesn't work, I'll have to find where you buy the the right piece and do all that. But, all right, so I already got pissed in here. Remember, like I said, M30 on this side. So next is the thing, washer. Yep, just like that. Spring. <clears throat> Top part. All right. There's two. We'll put this in. Now I got to put the pin in. Pin pins in. In. Plunger piece in. Washer. Ah, it fits. Sweetness. <clears throat> Tighten that baby down. All right. So got all three bodies done so insert in there like this Put that o-ring down in there like so <clears throat> and number three dead in there mm -hmm. there we go like so all right now we've got the cut off things in there so what I need to do now, do now is slide these rings in until they bottom out. Now this is going to be difficult. And I forgot to turn the AC off. So give me a minute and uh, See how this 
goes. So this fuel shut off rack fits in here. There's little balls. Just like that. Oops. Great. Just great. Don't do that. I pushed a little too hard and it it moved them before I was had them all set up. All right, so I'm just gonna set that in there gingerly, get everything lined up. Okay, now I'll take my plate. Now see, I have it in there backwards. Take my plate like that, like so. So you can see where the holes are. Holes line up. Teeny-weensy screws. Get them started. Tiny little Phillips. Okay. Get Phillips screwdriver. The holes are beveled, so it'll line the plate right up. You don't need to torque super tight. Snap them little things off. And verify everything moves inside. Yep. Looks good. Now I need to Connect the piston rods. To the springs. This is going to be problematic. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing is I am pulling the injector pistons out. Now remember, M30 goes to the back and the, this little Zexel symbol goes towards 
this side towards the fuel shutoff rack. So I'm taking the spring, putting it over it, taking your keeper, putting it over that, hold it tight. You know which way it's facing. Slide it back down in there. Just like that, okay? One more to do. Take this little little pin, push down, until it's in the gap, put that pin in, let go, now it's in there. So the next one. That's in there. Next one. Ah! Oh. See that? It came out of one of them when I was putting it together. So I gotta take it all back apart again. Yay me. Uh, put all the bits over where they belong. It's not that one. Of course it's a little late now. Fun times. It's that one. So that could have went worse. So, just the one that I messed up. Well, I didn't mess up. Whatever. So now I gotta get this back in there. Turn to the stop, stop rod. Thirty goes towards the back. Oop. Oh, we forgot that collar. Make 
sure again. 30's going to the back. All right, there you go. Man, that rack's so stiff, though. I think it was supposed to be that stiff. I mean, I could move it, but... And it didn't move at all last time. Man, that's... That's stiff. That's tight. Now I don't want to move at all. Hmm. Maybe it'll be better with a little oil. Way too stiff. But I don't have any basis. I don't have any basis to. It's supposed to operate pretty smooth with a, uh, with a solenoid, so being that stiff. It's not a good sign. I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, solenoid's not going to move that. That's too stiff. too stiff. Yeah, it is supposed to go this way, but then the hole's wrong. What the hey? I figured out the issue. See how the see how there's a gap. It's the spring tension's pushing the uh, thing out, and I don't know if you can see. 
see how it's bumped up right there because it pushes that little nub up but this side I tighten down and it's down low so it was forcing it's forcing the rack forcing the rack in there at an angle and that was binding so I'm just gonna barely snug down one side just to just to see if my hypothesis is correct but I'm pretty sure it is so Put the plate on. Sure seems like it's uh, gonna do it. Oh yeah, muy bueno, buco muy bueno. So I'll put the top bolts in here. You can see where the paint mark is, where they came off. So you can kind of line them back up the way they were because they're basically timing it works kind of like the distributor in your car well back when cars had distributors and uh, you rotate it one way to advance the timing and rotate it the other way to retard the timing and what they mean by that is turn it one way and the fuel is injected sooner before the piston gets all the way up or before the spark happens in a gas engine if you retard it the pistons more up or coming back down so you just change where that either the fuel fires or the spark plug fires depending on whether you got a gas or a uh, diesel engine these are security bits a little hole in the mill so I had to uh, get that from horrible freight harbor freight I had to get that from harbor freight so it's pretty much done oh one more thing quick before the battery dies See how those are all, they're not lined up. You want to line them up lengthwise. And then there's a metal clip right here. Start on one side and it goes across, go through all those slots. And there you go. 
That's your completed, rebuilt Zexel Z-E-X-E-L. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. That's it. That's your injection pump. So I'll install it in the light plant and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does, but I think it will. So that's all for now for the rebuild. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.